always remember we are in the loving embrace of our Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Friends, as we pray this way of the cross, we walk together in Christ Jesus our Savior, who has gathered us in His love and redeemed us by His blood. By His cross and resurrection and the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, we are now one with Christ and with each other. And Christ is now present in the world through us. As church, we are called to share in Christ's mission, to lead people back to the Father, to reach out and help those who are in need, those who are excluded and oppressed, the outcasts of the world, and to accompany children and young people to Jesus and to care for our common home as stewards of God's creation. In this way of the cross, may we walk together in Christ and pray for one another, for our family and friends, for our students and co-workers and our partner communities, for our community, our nation, and our world, especially for those who are in great need, for those who are now going through dark and painful moments, and also for those who have gone on ahead of us. And so let us pray together. Together we praise you, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, our Savior and Redeemer, as you hung upon the cross, you have shown the great love of our God and Father for all of us. To redeem us from sin, you allowed yourself to be nailed to the cross. On the cross, you opened out your arms and offered your life, the sacrifice of the new covenant that brings forth the church and gives to her sacraments their saving power. On the cross, you proved what you said, the grain of wheat must die to bring forth an abundant harvest, a people you have gained for your Father. Lord Jesus, as we, your church, pray this way of the cross, may we reap the harvest of salvation whose seeds you planted in pain and watered in blood. May your cross be our comfort in trouble, our refuge in the face of danger, and our safeguard on life's journey until you welcome us to our heavenly home where you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And now, friends, let us walk together in Christ to his cross and resurrection.
Christ and we bless you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. The first station. Jesus institutes the Eucharist at the Last Supper. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, before he died, Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, This is my body that is for you. He took the cup, gave thanks, gave it to his disciples, and said, This is the cup of my blood. Eat my body and drink my blood to remember me. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. On the cross and on the altar, Christ's body is broken and his blood is poured out. With Christ, we are broken, poured out, and shared to give life to others. There are so many people who go hungry every day. Do we live out the Eucharist and become bread that is broken for others? Let us pray for our brothers and sisters who go hungry every day, especially those who belong to our partner communities, public school students all over the Philippines, children in our feeding programs, and victims of calamities, violence, and injustice. Lord Jesus, may we, your church, be faithful in celebrating the Eucharist as you told us to. May we always want to receive you as often as we can so that we may always be with you and become more like you. May you teach us how to love and serve like you who live and reign in our hearts forever and ever. Amen.
We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. The second station, Jesus prays at the Garden of Gethsemane. From the Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Jesus went to the Mount of Olives, and the disciples followed him. He knelt down and prayed. He said, Father, if you are willing, take this cup away from me. Still not my will, but yours to be done. And to strengthen him, an angel from heaven appeared to him. He was such in agony, he prayed so hard that his sweat became like drops of blood falling on the ground. After praying more, he went and talked to his disciples. Then the crowd came to arrest him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. At the Mount of Olives, Jesus experienced great anguish that his sweat became like drops of blood. We all suffer from various forms of pain in body, mind, and heart, some to the point of despair and hopelessness. But God has brought us together to accompany one another. Are we there for those in pain? Are we open to share our own pains to others? Let us pray for those who suffer from any form of pain in mind, body, heart, and spirit. Those who come to us for comfort and assurance. Those who ask for help in our ministries and apostolates. Those who suffer alone and in silence. Lord Jesus, you felt fear, loneliness, and a sense of failure so strongly that you were also in physical pain as you prayed in that garden. May you come to console us and comfort us in our painful moments as the angel did to you. May we also do the same to others for we walk together with you who live and reign in our hearts forever and ever. Amen.
cup of glory. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. The third station. Jesus is condemned to death. From the Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. They brought Jesus to Pilate. Pilate said to the crowd, Then what shall I do with Jesus called Christ? They all said, Let him be crucified. But he said, Why? What evil has he done? They only shouted louder, Let him be crucified. Pilate then washed his hands, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. Look to it yourselves. And the whole people said in reply, His blood be upon us and upon our children. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus had no sin, and yet he was found guilty. The crowd hated him and wanted him dead. In our communities, don't we also condemn certain kinds of people to death? But aren't we disciples of Jesus who are called to build a society of justice and life? For those who are condemned by the world to die, will their blood be upon us and our children? Let us pray for those who are excluded in society, those who are homeless and wander in our streets, those who have fallen to a life of crime, those who suffer from various forms of addiction, those whose way of life does not conform with the majority and are oppressed for being who they are. Lord Jesus, even if you were all good and you helped a lot of people, they still wanted to hurt you and kill you. People still do this to this day and to one another and to our world. Please teach us and keep reminding us that we are all brothers and sisters, that we are all children of God. Give us courage to stand up for compassion, life, truth, and genuine justice, for we have no other Lord but you, who live and reign in our hearts forever and ever. Amen. and we bless you because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world the fourth station jesus is scourged and crowned with thorns 
from the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. The soldiers beat up and whipped Jesus. They led Jesus into the fortress and brought together the rest of the troops. They took off Jesus' clothes and put a scarlet robe on him. They made a crown out of thorns, branches, and placed it on his head, and they put a stick in his right hand. The soldiers knelt down and pretended to worship him. They made fun of him and shouted, Hail the king of the Jews! Then they spit on him. They took the stick from him and beat him on the head with it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus accept, accepted all the blows and lashings. The soldiers made fun of him. They put a painful crown on his head and a pretend scepter in his hand. Jesus was hurt, so he understood when he are hurt. He knows how we will, how we feel when others make fun of us. Do we help others who are being hurt or mocked? Do we mock others, especially those who are not like us? Do our words and actions hurt others? Do we insult the poor and the earth with our uncaring and lavish lifestyle? Let us pray for those who are mocked by society, the different able, the physically challenged, those deformed by illness or genetic conditions, the poor, the vulnerable, and the outcasts. Those who have committed mistakes in their past, and those who are suffer from injustice and lies. Lord Jesus, you told us that when we feel that our world hits us, we must remember that it hated you first. Give us your church courage to face those who mock us whenever we stand up for what is right, whenever we protect the poor, the vulnerable, and the outcast, and whenever we call out lies and injustice. May your church keep forging ahead in spite of the wounds, for you are the crucified and risen Lord, who lives in the rain in our hearts forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. The fifth station, Jesus receives the cross. From the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John, it was preparation day for Passover, and it was about noon. Pilate brought out Jesus and said to the Jews, Behold your king. Then he handed him over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus and carrying the cross himself, he went out to what is called the place of the skull they call in Hebrew Golgotha, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus receives his cross, the cross that was once a tree, a living tree, was made into an instrument of punishment and a symbol of shame and death. God, God created all things good. God created us good and commanded us to be stewards of his creation. But do we take care of God's creation or do we abuse it and use it to destroy, to kill, and to oppress people? Let us pray for the environment that the nations, corporations, communities, and individuals commit to care for our common home on all levels, that genuine reforms be made in making commerce and production more sustainable, and that projects that will have adverse consequences on the environment and people may be stopped. Lord Jesus, all things came to be through you. Your own creation became the instrument of your death just as we have abused creation, and it has now turned on us. Put us up at the, far for, at the forefront of the struggle for the environment. Help us teach the people of today a better and more sustainable way of living. Help us promote not only human life, but also the life of the world, for you are life itself, and you live and reign in our hearts forever and ever. Amen.
we adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. The sixth station. Jesus falls under the weight of the cross. From the book of the prophet Isaiah. It was our pain that he bore. Our sufferings he endured. We thought of him as stricken, struck down by God, and punished. But he was pierced for our sins, crushed for our wickedness. He bore the punishment that makes us whole. By his wounds, we were healed. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The cross was so heavy that Jesus fell to the ground, tired, beaten, wounded, and bleeding. All people carry various forms of burden, but there are those whose burdens are heavier than others, and there are those whose burdens are caused by other people. Even children and young people today are given burdens that dim their hope and dampen their future. There are many people who are also brought down by their cross in life. Have we become a burden for others? Do we unnecessarily weigh down others, especially young people? Do we lift others up or do we throw them to the ground? Let us pray for those who are brought down by life's struggles, those who have lost their loved ones, those who are seriously ill, those who lost their livelihood, and those who have fallen into despair and attempted to end their life. Lord Jesus, you were brought down by the weight of the cross. You know how it feels to fall to the ground in pain, tired of carrying that heavy cross. May we accompany the people who also carry crosses in life and are also brought down by their burdens. May we feel discomfort when we see people with problems and difficulties and assist them. May we work to lift the yoke of oppression and unshackle the chains of injustice from all people, for that is your will for us. You who live and reign in our hearts forever and ever. Amen. a grain of wheat fall to the ground and die it remains a single grain but if it Life. 
Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Se the seventh station Jesus is assisted by Simon the Cyrenian from the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Simon from Cyrene happened to be coming in from a farm and they forced him to carry Jesus' cross. Simon was the father of Alexander and Rufus. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Simon, an ordinary, simple, and unknown man, was made to carry the cross with Jesus. He may have been forced to do it, but he never withdrew and denied Jesus who came to him. We are also invited to carry the saving cross and share in Jesus' act of love. We may be old or young, popular or unknown, yet Jesus calls us to share in His saving work and to help others carry their crosses in life. Let us pray for greater solidarity among us, that all peoples may become closer to one another in a spirit of genuine concern for one another and compassion for all. Let us pray for our ministries, apostolates, offices, and initiatives that cater to the needs of the poor, vulnerable, and the least in society. Lord Jesus, thank you for giving us the chance to share in your loving work of salvation. Help us show your love to the ordinary, simple, and unknown members of our community. Help us reach out to those in the fringes of society. May we actively take part in your work, not only in prayer and in the celebration of sacraments, but also in the work for justice and development. For you are our Lord, who lives and reigns in our hearts forever and ever. Amen.
We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. The eighth station, Jesus meets the women of Jerusalem. From the Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. A large crowd was following Jesus, and in the crowd a lot of women were crying and weeping for him. Jesus turned to the women and said, Women of Jerusalem, don't cry for me. Cry for yourselves and for your children. If they could do this to me, imagine what they could do to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. As the women weep for Jesus, Jesus tells them to be sad instead for themselves and their children. Women and children were treated as insignificant and had few rights. Thus, Jesus tells them that they get a far worse treatment than him. Who are the marginalized people today? Should we stay complacent with the killing of criminals? How do we treat those families left behind by these killings and the victims of war? Do we weep for them? Let us pray for those who are widowed and orphaned by injustice. The families of those who were killed in war, crime, violence, and extrajudicial killings. We pray especially for the community of the Sacred Heart Mission Station in Caloocan and the people of Marawi and Mamasapano. Lord Jesus, you give consolation and comfort to the downhearted, hope and courage to the fearful, and strength and determination to the weak. May we console those who are sad and grieving, weep and walk with the people who are set aside, and work to improve the situation. May we learn to value all people for you, offered your life for them, and you live and reign in our hearts forever and ever. Amen. Na aking kapatid, sa 
bukit ka nagtatanim At sa palengke rin naman Ikaw ay naghahanap buhay Tulutan mong aking matulat Mabulat sa katotohanan Ikaw po Makikilala, ikaw po on makikilala, ikaw po on makikilala sa tao mapagku. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. The ninth station, Jesus is nailed to the cross. From the Passion of Our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke, they took Jesus, and carrying the cross himself, he went out to what is called the place of the skull, Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side, with Jesus in the middle. Pilate also had an inscription written on the, and put on the cross. It read, Jesus, the Nazarene, the King of the Jews. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus was nailed to the cross and hung between heaven and earth, between God and humankind. He became our bridge to God and the ladder to ascend to heaven. We are united with Christ on the cross. We, too, bridge the chasm that separates heaven and earth, God and people. We are called to lead people back to God. St. Ignatius gave us the spiritual exercises as a means to help people towards God. But do we serve as bridges to God, or do our words, actions, lifestyle, and attitudes turn people away and alienate them further from God and the Church? Let us pray for those who have become lukewarm to the faith those who have been baptized and yet did not receive adequate formation in faith, those who have been raised Catholics but turned away from the faith because of bad experiences and scandals in the church, and those who have not received nourishment in their faith and so have fallen away from the faith. Lord Jesus, on the cross, you stretch out your arms between heaven and earth. You are our way to the Father, May we continue to link God and people. May we help people find their way to God and restore people to friendship. May we channel your grace to your people so that they may come to know you as Lord and you may live and reign in their hearts forever and ever. Forever and ever. Amen.
adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. The Tenth Station Jesus forgives the repentant thief. From the Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. One of the criminals hanging there also insulted Jesus by saying, Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and save us. But the other criminal told the first one off, Don't you fear God? Aren't you getting the same punishment as this man? We got what was coming to us, but he didn't do anything wrong. Then he said to Jesus, Remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus said in reply, I promise that today you will be with me in paradise. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. On the cross, Jesus forgave those who did this to him and one of the thieves. The thief looked at Jesus and saw him for who he is. He recognized Jesus and his own sinfulness and said sorry. Through the death and resurrection of his son, God has reconciled the world to himself and sent the Holy Spirit among us for the forgiveness of sins. We are called to the same mercy of Christ and to make available God's forgiveness through the sacrament of reconciliation. Are we a reconciling community? Do we strive to heal the wounds of sin and division? Let us pray for all those who seek forgiveness with a sincere heart and those who have fallen into a life of crime, repented, and paid their due. Let us pray especially for the Philippine Jesuit Prison Service. Let us pray that people may have compunction for their sins. Let us pray that we may become a reconciling community. Lord Jesus, you are the visible face of the invisible Father, of the God who manifests power above all by forgiveness and mercy. May we recognize that we ourselves need constant forgiveness, and so we should be ready to forgive others. May we have the heart to forgive and remember that the church you love is made up of both sinners and saints. May we lead all people back to you who live and reign in our hearts forever and ever. Amen.
adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. The eleventh station. Jesus entrusts his mother to his disciple. From the passion of your Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Jesus' mother stood beside his cross with her sister and Mary, the wife of Clopas. Mary Magdalene was standing there too. When Jesus saw his mother and his beloved disciple with her, he said to his mother, This man is now your son. Then he said to the disciple, She is now your mother. From then on, that disciple took her into his own home. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus loves his mother and so entrusts her to his beloved disciple. We are Jesus' beloved disciple today. He also gives his mother to be our mother. As Mary cared for Jesus, she cares for her son's church on earth. As she followed Jesus and stayed even at the foot of the cross, may we also follow Jesus on the way of the cross and take part in his offering. With Mary as our mother, let us remember too that we are also a family. We are the family of God with God as our father, Mary our mother, and Jesus and each other as brothers and sisters. Let us pray for the constant protection of our Blessed Mother, that she, who was with her son in his suffering and death, may also be with us, who walk together in Christ, and with those who experience suffering, pain, hardship, and grief. May she accompany all those who are in the final moments of their earthly life, and with Jesus, bring them to the company of God in heaven. Lord Jesus, aside from our mothers who love us, we thank you for giving us our Holy Mother Church and another mother in the church who loves us as you do, your own mother, Mary. May we truly show her our love and respect and look up to her also as an example of how to walk and follow you, who is also her Lord and our Lord, who lives and reigns in our hearts and forever and ever. Amen.
Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. The twelfth station, Jesus dies on the cross. From the Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Jesus said, I thirst. There was a vessel filled with common wine. So they put a sponge soaked in a wine on a sprig of hyssop and put it up to his mouth. When Jesus had taken the wine, he said, It is finished. And bowing his head, he handed over the spirit. The day after Jesus' death would be both a Sabbath and Passover. It was a special day for the Jewish people, and they did not want Jesus' body to stay on the cross during the day. So the Jews asked Pilate to break his legs and take his body down. The soldiers first broke the legs of the other two men who were nailed there. But when they came to Jesus, they saw that he was already dead, and they did not break his legs. One of the soldiers struck his spear into Jesus' side, and blood and water came out. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus' death is the best image of love. This is how God showed his love for us. This love flowed from Jesus, water and blood from his side. The church was born from the side of Christ to bring his love to the world and to be his love in the world. We came from Jesus. We are one with him and we share in his life. Because of the great love of Jesus for us, we should live, speak, and act knowing the price Jesus paid for us. Jesus handed over his Holy Spirit to us so that we may continue to his, continue his life and his loving service here on earth and so we can walk together in Christ. Let us pray that the Paschal Mystery of Christ be more felt and manifested in our midst through our participation in the saving work of Christ. Lord Jesus, you shared in our humanity and offered yourself on the cross to show us how to live as your church, that our lives should be a fragrant offering to God and to neighbor. Your death in our humanity allowed us to share in your divinity. As the church for which you died, may we share in your life and saving work so that we may bring more people into your kingdom where you live and reign forever and ever. Amen.
We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. The Thirteenth Station Jesus is Buried From the Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ According to John After this, Joseph of Arimathea, secretly a disciple of Jesus, for fear of the Jews, asked Pilate if he could remove the body of Jesus. They took the body of Jesus and bound it with burial cloths along with the spices, spices that Nicomodius bought, brought. They buried him following the Jewish custom. Now in the place where he had been crucified, there was a garden. And in the garden, a new tomb in which no one had yet been buried. So they laid Jesus there because of the Jewish preparation day. For the tomb was close by. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus died and was buried in a tomb that didn't even belong to him. He went to our deepest and darkest regions to look for us, to fetch us, to bring us up, to bring us back to God. We were not meant for darkness. We were, we were meant to live in God's light. May we, who, who are baptized into Christ's death and resurrection, also seek those who are in darkness. Do we reach out our hand to them, or do we leave them in the dark? Let us pray for those who have problems, sickness, hardship, and grief, those who are in the clutches of poverty, those in the margins and peripheries of society, those neglected and discarded by society, the youth who are set aside. Lord Jesus, you are our shepherd who looks for us in the valley of the shadow of death. You do not desire anyone to be lost in darkness, but every one of us be brought to your kingdom of light. Strengthen our hope that we will rise again and take us by the hand to our Father's house. May we, your church, also seek our fellow human beings who might be stumbling in the dark and share with them the life and the joy of your victory on the cross. For you live and reign in our hearts forever and ever. Amen. Oh 
kinin kasing kasing ko sa gugma alang kami. you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. The fourteenth station, Jesus rises from the dead. From the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Very early, when the sun had risen on the first day of the week, they came to the tomb. On entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a white robe, and they were utterly amazed. He said to them, Do not be amazed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, the crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Behold, the place where they laid him. But go, and tell his disciples and Peter, He is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him, as he told you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We were baptized in the death and resurrection of Jesus. We died with Christ in our sins and with Christ. We rose again to new life in Him, in baptism, and we became members of Christ's body, the Church. We are the presence of the risen Lord, risen Christ in the world. We continue to the saving work of Christ by the power of His Spirit dwelling within us. And behold, He is with us until the end of time. What is our idea of the Church? What do we understand? that we are part of the church. Do we take part in the life and mission of the church? Let us pray for all of us who make up the church, that we may extend the presence of Christ in the world, and so through us, people may be able to walk together in Christ and with Christ. Lord Jesus, you have shattered the gates of death and open for us the way to eternal life. May we, your church, rise to a new and glorious life through the power of your Spirit. To all of us who are baptized into your death, give the power flowing from your resurrection. Set our hearts on fire so that we may proclaim near and far the power of your cross and resurrection as we continue your presence and saving work for you live and reign in our hearts forever and ever amen As he has 
has promised. For me he's risen that from fear I may be free. Not even death can separate me from him whose love and might remain in me. I know my Savior lives. I can hear him calling tenderly my name. Over sin and death he has prevailed. In his glory, in his new life we partake. Let us pray. Almighty God and our loving Father, your Son suffered death on the cross to save all people. Though sinless, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted the punishment for us. As we, your church, embrace this mystery, may we extend your presence and your saving work on earth and so come to share in the triumph of your redemption in heaven where you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Before we end, I would like to thank everyone who took part in this University Way of the Cross, the participants and volunteers for each station from the different units and offices of the university. The University Marketing and Communications Office Central Facilities Management Office and Campus Safety and Mobility Office. The Ignatian Spirituality Formation Mission Integration Cluster and this year's sponsoring unit, the Ateneo de Manila Grade School. We thank everyone with us during this online University Way of the Cross. We wish everyone a meaningful and spiritually fruitful Holy Week. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. In the passion of his only Son, God, the Father of mercies, has given you the greatest example of love. May he bless you beyond measure for your service of God and neighbor. Amen. May God grant you eternal life through the death of Jesus Christ, which has freed you from eternal death. Amen. May God inspire you to imitate the humility and obedience of Christ and bring you to the glory of his resurrection. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Take up your cross each day and follow Jesus. Go in peace. Thanks be to God.